like to uh, play Urkel for most of your childhood and be a multimillionaire. I don't see any downside to uh, having done that. I mean, he's set for life now. Yo, 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 Got a yo, brand new I show on uh, UPN called Grown Ups. It's a new sitcom. And there he is, Jaleel White. Dressed in a suit. He's dressed way too good for this show. <laughs> where did he think he is? <laughs> Um, yeah, where do you think you are? I mean, this, this is our show. You should be wearing your underwear. What, what, do you got a bunch of appearances today? Yeah. Oh, that's what's going on. That's what I thought. You look no, good no, in this suit. You didn't dress like this for us. Yeah, you're like you a businessman. You look as your first. Yeah, you're like a businessman in that suit. Well, actually, I am a businessman. Yeah, I guess you are. Yep. Yep. I don't know. It's like, um, where are you going today in a business suit? What uh, shows are you booked on? Um, I'm just doing The View. That's really the only uh. thing. Oh, The View. Oh. Um, I, those, those women are fun. Those yentas. Those fun. <laughs> Those, those women are worse than Kathy Lee. Yeah, I'm not sure who's worse. Robin? No, oh. Kathy Lee is worse than those women, oh, aren't they? No, 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 I don't know. Honestly, but there's four of I them. I specifically wanted to do The View over Kathy Lee. Really? And, and, and Why is that? I just feel like uh, they're, they're a friendlier, more genuine group of people. And really? I would rather sit there and, and have yeah. a, a fun conversation. But Kathy Lee's a big phony. I mean, don't you think that she... I don't like interacting with phony people. If I get the impression that you're phony, I just don't, you know... So you got that impression as well. I, I was, what, 13 years old and I got that impression. <laughs> really? It's not hard to see. So I didn't now, you know, it's very rare that you hear somebody say something refreshing like that. You know, I'm just, you know, she didn't do anything personal to me or whatnot. I just got the feeling, it's like, lady, I really don't think you're into me at all. I don't think you really give a damn about this interview and, really you know uh, wow well, that's that's fantastic you talked to the view wow. women before hold it i have to I, applaud that okay. i haven't talked <laughs> i really oh. have to applaud that <laughs> because i think you're gonna come away with that same feeling <laughs> i don't know i i at least well i i, I guess there are a couple ones in there that I, I get i get a genuine you know who i dig i dig that new chinese broad i mean to, for, from her looks don't you well, think she's, she's kind of hot? She's cute. I mean, she's uh, she might be dopey, but who cares? <laughs> dopey are the better. Man, oh man, they forgot the brain. Really? She's dumb? <laughs> I don't really watch the show myself because it's for chicks. I'm not allowed to watch. I feel like I'm invading private territory. No, yeah, you know. really, that is definitely not men territory there. And I know I hate Star Jones because she's yeah. a big fatso and she's always got something oh. bad to say about me. Right. Oh. No, she just, you know, and who is she? Who is she, really? Nobody. She's always mouthing up. And then that other one I hate, too. Meredith Vieira. Meredith Vieira. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like no one's been inside her pants in the last 10 years. Oh, oh no. Get the whip out. Am I right or am I wrong? Whip out. <laughs> I mean, uh... These are, you know, the thing that maybe they are genuine because they seem very angry to me, those Yeah. <laughs> and who, the other broad, uh, Joy uh, Behar. Joy Behar. You know. hey, I'm gonna have a good time. Wherever That's what I, you say. Wherever I go, my attitude is <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna have a good try. Time. <laughs> my attitude is. <laughs> my attitude is <laughs> it might be your attitude doesn't mean you're gonna have one. <laughs> well, what are you gonna talk to them about? I, I don't know. Shucks, whatever's. Going Who on. will handle the interview? You know, because they're like a singing group. Everybody has to get the lead. Right, every right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think will handle it? Have you discussed? Have you had a pre-interview with them? Uh, yeah, I had a mm. pre-interview with them. And, and, and they didn't tell you who'll be asking the questions. Any one of them can rock it, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Let's hope they're not on their period. It together. Oh, well, they right? have to be, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they have to be. Too many. They do, because women who work together get their periods at the same yeah. time. I know Robin and I get our periods at the same We're time. We're always on the same cycle. Yeah. 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 So, so <laughs> you know, girls. I think you've done a pretty good job of shedding the Urkel image, because first of all, wait as Robin minute, says... What are you talking about, shedding the Urkel well, image? Well, I'm going to lead into my thesis. Okay, all right. Because like, as Robin says, like you take... Uh, like, leave it a beaver. Okay, beaver. <laughs> like, he's still beaver. He's still beaver. Yeah. You know, and and uh, you take, and then you take Gary Coleman or Webster, neither one of them managed to even grow. Well, they're both significantly shorter than me. Right, so I yeah, was always yeah. nervous you wouldn't grow. Right, we no, thought you were going to be one of those guys. It seemed like the curse of every kid actor. The, Emmanuel Lewis is literally one of the coolest celebrities I have ever met in my entire life. You hang with him? I have hung out with Emmanuel Lewis. How yeah. can you hang out with him? He comes up to your knee. Right. Like, hey, why, how are you going to judge? How are you guys, of all people on this show, going to judge somebody because of their height? <laughs> but seriously, though, when you hang around with him. You pick him up? Did you, have you ever had like. I'll pick Manny up. Manny would probably swing on me if I tried to pick him but up. But is it hard to think of him as a man because he's in the trap in that little boy's body? Not really. I'm is telling he you, dating? I'm, I listen to more of what's coming out of somebody's mouth, and I'm telling you, this guy has got a serious, serious head on really? his shoulder. And where did you meet him? I'm, I met Manny just through the business. And Manny. Then, uh, that's but Manny. And it's, <laughs> Manny. That's about. an old Jew, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> Manny. He's over at the deli. What do you do? You put him in your knapsack and you guys go out for dinner? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love them. Do you pick up women together? Yeah. I don't pick up Where women. do you go? Toys R Us? We did We did go to a club, though. We did. Yeah. We did. Oh, that's got to be funny. Ah. We did go to a club. I got to introduce uh, Jaleel to uh, Beetlejuice. Gotta... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait a second. Let me understand something. Where do you meet Manny, Emmanuel Lewis? <laughs> Shucks. Um, he actually, he did, uh, he, did, he did Family Matters. Okay. So okay. the two of you obviously related to one another because yeah. you both played... You know, as kids, you were child stars. You were child yeah, stars. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Exactly. So there's something to talk about there. Exactly. And and when you're talking to him, you can relate to him as an adult, even though he's trapped in a child's body. It, definitely. And right. I mean, I just think he has a firm handle on how to deal with this business, especially having grown up in this madness. So <laughs> I, I can learn a lot from so him. So now you I did. do you go over his house? Uh, when I was in Atlanta, yeah, we visited. I visited him. Does he have a mansion? Is he a very well? He must be wealthy. Well, his house was being remodeled at the time, so I couldn't. I couldn't go. He came to pick me up. Right. But and does he have a regular sized car? Yeah, he's good. Does, does he drive? drive? Yes. He How does he drive? He drives this huge, huge <laughs> freaking truck. It's yeah, but does urban. he? Does he have special pedals so he can reach? Seriously. Okay. Yes, he does. But yeah. I'm a friend, so I am not going to bash. No, him. No, no, no. I don't want you to bash him. I'm oh, curious about him. It's his. It's his whole house scaled down. Like when you go in the toilet, it's very right, low to like the ground. To bend down and crawl in. No, seriously, I would do. Like I, I built my house for a tall guy. I made yeah. the ceilings high. He has a dollhouse. Right. He has a dollhouse. <laughs> Howard, I would, yeah. I would venture to say that his house is as big as your house. No, I don't doubt no, that. No, no, no. We're I'm just, just saying, saying. Is everything low? Yeah. No, everything was normal. He just kind of. But the mirror would have something. to be low. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the he, chairs. And the chairs. Man, he's yeah, got enough money to hire somebody to, to hold him up to the mirror if he wants. Does, does he live by himself or does he have a chick? Uh, I think he lives by himself. He does. He's yeah. a bachelor. Yeah. All right. Definitely. And can so this, you went to the club. Can this kid get laid? Definitely. Be I honest. I put it past him. Really? You don't I'm know? I'm telling you. I would put it. He is did so you cool. Did you didn't see any chicks? to the ladies. I, did yeah. I see him talking to the ladies? We walked to the club. He just grabs two girls and we go straight to the dance floor. No <laughs> high posting in the corner or and anything. When you go to, and, when you go to the, and when you go to the club, does he dance on top of the table or does he dance on the dance floor? He's on the dance floor getting his groove thing on. <laughs> really? All right. And, and let, me, let, me, let me understand something. Hey, baby, you want to dance? This so when must you talk, have been a great night. So when you talk with him... Do you talk about women and stuff? You talk about anything you would talk to. Did he ever bring up Michael Jackson and sitting on the ki- on the on the kid's lap? Carried around. He carried him. Him. That had to be a horrible experience for him. I really didn't talk to him about. I don't believe that. See, just, Michael I Jackson never there, like, called you, did he? I would, no, Mike didn't call me. I think I was too big for Mike. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you're, you're too, too big, tall. I was too black. I wanted the two. <laughs> you're I don't too know. black, too tall. You got a mustache. <laughs> you're too something. Right. So wait a second. Because for a time in Emmanuel Lewis's life, yeah. now this to me, if I had him sitting here, I would have to ask him this. For a time, he would be on Michael Jackson's lap all the time, and it had to be confusing to him because hey, he was he really was like a mask. He was 13 years old when he was sitting on that guy's lap. He was probably older than it that. was right. worse than just sitting on his lap. Michael never let his feet touch the ground. All right. So, what do you think? What do you say about that? Hey, man, I don't know the nature of that relationship. Oh, yes, you do. And you never <laughs> asked. <laughs> you do too. I know you do. How could you not ask? What do you say? You don't know the nature of that relationship. I'm sounded I like the answer know. from a witness stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This ain't like, none of this counts. He's been coached by a lawyer. <laughs> you know the funniest thing. About this room, people don't understand the configuration. You're getting it from all sides in here. Right, right, yeah. If somebody runs out of something to say, someone else will think of something. So, so uh, wait a second. So, I got to tell you this story. Okay. I'll tell you, you're a good sport. So, we're on the plane. And by the way, I want to explain something. I'm coming back from Los Angeles. Now you're going to. Yeah, let me explain this, okay? Because right. I know you were giving me a strange look back there in business class. I wasn't going to say No, no, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait. Thinking. What were you thinking? What that you I, thinking? I'm down on bad times? No, I wasn't thinking you were down on bad times at all. I was just like, you know, wow. I mean, I, I, I really thought didn't know he was what a big think. star. Right. I mean, I didn't know what to think, really. All right, listen to this. <laughs> Let me explain. Maybe Your CBS is being big. cheap, man. Did no. you think about not doing the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you know you're not what? a big star. Honestly, you really, you really want to know what I thought? Right. I thought something obviously has gone wrong with this guy's plans, and this guy is really a big person because most celebrities will say, screw it, I am not flying if I'm not oh. flying first class. So I, when I saw you in business class, like I said, this guy is really cool. This guy's down to earth because he's got to get back for work, and it doesn't matter. He's going to get on his plane. It's funny you say that. Wow. Now, here's well, what happened. It was a good funny you say that. You here's made. what happened. First of all, it wasn't CBS. Was fl- I was flying out there on my own dime. Okay. I, I fly first class because I want to feel like I'm happening. Well, by the way, they lose your luggage if you don't fly first class. Exactly. <laughs> so I was booked on American Airlines to fly home at 1 o'clock. So th- I get to the airport. They tell me the flight's canceled. Oh. Okay. They, and you know what? I, I've cool. been kind of disappointed in first class because I used to go to Los Angeles all the time. I see big celebrities. Yeah. Always see big celebrities in first class. It was always exciting to come back and talk to Robin about it and everything, how we interacted. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'd have a good time off his trip. So, yeah, so I get to the airport, <laughs> and they tell me it's canceled, and they say, well, there's a flight at 145 on United. So you must have been booked on that flight to begin with. Or you, were you booked on American? I was booked on that flight, on the United flight, because I guess your entourage had taken up all the seats at first. There was nothing the left. American right. Flight. So so, <laughs> so you we get to American. So you bumped from the plane. Yeah, so, I was, so American was like all booked up. You know, it was canceled. <laughs> Three o'clock was all booked up. They said, you go on 145. And the guy at special services says to me, but here's the deal. you got to fly in business class because Elizabeth Hurley has your seat. <laughs> well, not, not, that's not quite true. Well, that's what the guy said because yeah, he was the right guy said <laughs> he would have. He would have given me the seat if I was if flying he under my own known name. Who you were, right? But uh, Elizabeth Hurley flies under her own name. Two seats, right? So listen to this. <laughs> so now I'm saying to myself, "Oh crap! I, you mean I'm going to be in business class, and Elizabeth Hurley is going to be in first class, and I'm not going to get to look at her, and she's going to think I'm a loser, and Probably I'm down on my luck." Friend. Yeah, right. <laughs> she wasn't looking at anybody. Really. So I get so I get on the plane. They sit me down in business class. I said, you know what? I don't want. I, my agent said to me he would go back and wait the next day just to go home in first class because we had come back. We had done some very yeah, successful that's what business. I said. Most people would do. It. Right. And I said, I said, I said, what's the big deal? So we're in hey, business you know class. You were probably thinking nobody's been on these planes. Anyway. Yeah, it's going to suck anyway, yeah. right? So, and so then you get on, and everybody. I sit, sees I'm sitting you down in business, business class. <laughs> All of a sudden, I see Jaleel, <laughs> and I go, uh oh. Now Jaleel's going to think I'm a loser and that I'm down on my luck and, and I'm you cheap. Know what? Right. The thing is that a couple of weeks ago you were on the flight with John McEnroe. And he was in business and class. And he was in business and you were making fun. Goop, goop. I, the stewardess came up to me and said, I guess he's not doing that well. <laughs> So so now I'm That's thinking so crappy, it was so man. cold. That's so crazy. So I see Jaleel and Jaleel, you travel with some brother, right? Yeah, I was traveling Who's with it, your buddy friend? Of mine. Yeah, buddy of mine. Yeah. I could see there was a whole thing going on there. What? Yeah, he's got like a Ralph that I travel with. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> my man's yeah. Your and best ma- friend. And the man looks out for him and stuff, you know. Right. Right. So you know, in uh, case it gets grimy in the streets, you know. Yeah, and what's the deal? Your man doesn't even work except for you, right? No, I just he's got his own job. He's he just does? literally a friend, man. Okay, all right, okay, all right, take it easy. All right. So all of a sudden Jaleel sees me. He is a nice guy. He's a friendly guy. He comes back to say hi. And I'm he saying to myself, back to business. I want to just say, hey, listen, I was supposed to be in first class. <laughs> so Jaleel was very nice. And then he goes back, walks up to first class. And of course, the curtains close. That's right. They snap that curtain Because people in first class don't want to be seen with the riffraff in business. <laughs> and I'm like, man, the hell is that? I'm out. <laughs> so, I, so my agent goes, man, look at Elizabeth Hurley. She's wearing like a little sarong now, dress. How does he see her? Does you didn't he think she was hot? Mom? No. You didn't? No. Why are you really? saying that? Did you see the belly and the not at all and the and the, and, and the no bra? I he was, got closer because he was in first class. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's not your thing. I think she's hot. She's all right, man. Oh please! She's, you see you know what it is? You don't want to give her the time of day because you don't want her to think she she's didn't hot. Look at she you. Was serious? She was. You, and be quite honest, she's kind of flat on the backside for me. Oh really? Yeah. You wouldn't bang her. I'm, this is not my style, man. You really? Like Hugh Grant. This is not my style. Yeah, whatever. You can yeah. be in the booth with that one. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you mean, if you had your choice between a hooker and 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 Elizabeth Hurley, you would take the hooker, just like Hugh Grant did. Well, obviously, <laughs> if you look at the shape between Divine Brown and Elizabeth Hurley, you can see that Hugh and Hugh Grant probably have the same taste that I do. Though. Really? You would yeah. go for Divine Brown? Divine was hot, man. Interesting. The design was hot. Mm-hmm. Was hot. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway... So that whole standing on a street corner at midnight thing, though, kind of is a little <laughs> turn off. Yeah, but. she might have been with a few guys. Yeah, but. So then I see Donahue's in first class. He Jaleel. Was, that was really Donahue. You yeah, that was Donahue, Donahue, right? Before. Donahue was in first. Phil Donahue was in first class. With I you. never even saw him. Yeah, he was there. Wow. Yeah. Who else no, was in seriously, first class? I didn't even know. It's Phil Donahue, you, Elizabeth. I go finally a, a really good a scene. He's in first class. I would have gotten that broad talking. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. She you would, know you would have been quiet up there. She was snobby? Yeah, man. She wasn't saying much. No, she wasn't. Oh, yeah, I would have gotten usually, her talking. I was, even talking. I was even talking and she looked over her shoulder like, how dare you speak? Can't you see I'm trying to sleep? Oh, that bitch. <laughs> but you know how those beautiful women are. They usually keep their head right exactly. to the wall. You know That's what exactly I was, what she yeah. did. <laughs> you know what That's I was exactly hoping? exactly what she did. I'm, like, I'm so cool on that. I'm like, yo, just be yourself, man. <laughs> right. Nobody's checking for you. What we... You should have gone up and said, hey, I'm TV's Urkel. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> All right. All right I've made so, so wait a minute. You started off talking about how he's beaten that whole image thing. Oh yeah, but but anyway, but the whole time I was but fantasizing. That's what you say to somebody when you really want to smack them. Uh-huh. You know? I was fantasizing about a great movie. So this plane goes down. We hit an island. Everyone's dead Uh-oh. except for me, Jaleel, Donahue, and Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> 
who gets the you know yeah. okay under those circumstances yeah i might have to go for you it. might have to bang <laughs> no i had in you the movie gonna happen in the movie you, you bang donahue oh. and then i bang uh elizabeth you're all gonna <laughs> die because none of you have ever done anything for yourselves you it wouldn't go down that way howard <laughs> right. i assure you oh you think none of us know how to live on <laughs> our own you don't know how to do anything <laughs> on your own <laughs> so okay you better hope us. So we're getting them. off the plane. I'll tell you how, how much of a gentleman you are. So we're getting off the plane. Uh huh. And this guy, um, uh, oh, my agent, he couldn't find his luggage. So he says to the stewardess, hey, I don't know where my suitcase is. And she goes, hey, it's right behind Urkel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jaleel, like, leaned over and afterwards, like, thanked the same woman for yeah. being so nice. That was that woman you thanked. Yeah. She's the one who called you Urkel. Yeah. I can't help it if she didn't have any class about what she said. Yeah, I felt bad. But she had given me really good service, and hey, thanks a lot. Right, right. No, that was nice of you. But I was pissed when she yelled out, hey, right behind Urkel. It's like, you know, hey, man, what is that? Enough with the Urkel. Enough with the Urkel. You know, I'm... Most people don't just really don't know what to say. I right, think, you know, right. yeah. Well, because you were saying that, and I, just the other day, I pulled out one of those TV guide yeah. things from a local magazine, yeah. and they have Jaleel as he is today, and then a little picture of Urkel in the right. corner. Hey, he was Urkel. Yeah. Hey, you made a lot of money. You made millions doing that, Urkel. Yeah. Urkel I like that. Not bad. A that Urkel character is pretty damn good. Yeah, I Urkel was not bad. Part money, but it was okay. Oh, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You know, it's funny because I think he's such a nice guy, and he's been here before. And one of the guys that works here, I won't say who it is, came up to me and he goes, you know, I was watching the Hip Hop Awards last week, and they got all these guys, these rappers coming up, and then all of a sudden, they bring up a presenter, and it's Urkel. Yeah. He's like goofing on. What's his point? That, that Urkel, Urkel doesn't belong be at with the those guys. Awards. Oh, yeah. And you got to fight that all the time. Nah, I don't have to fight that. I feel right at home with those guys. You do? Most of them, anyways. Yeah. Well, according to the guy from me, you know. Did you see that award show, blue. Howard? What? That w- award show came on just as we were going on vacation. I didn't know if you'd uh, seen it. I saw not. some of it, yeah. It was the, the rapping know, award show? Right. I, I, I could imagine you hiding under your bed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was hidden under the bed. <laughs> I was afraid someone from the TV would come out and attack me. That was a pretty dangerous that award a, show. That was a wild was show. Cool. I sat in front of Don King. Oh, yeah. Don, Don comes on the show. Buster Rhymes was on there. It looked uh-huh. like he had some sort of posse up there with him. But you need an interpreter. I didn't even know what anybody was talking about. I don't either. I, don't, I knew what Jaleel was talking about. Yeah, but everybody else was speaking that language. Did you speak to... Uh, did, you know how to talk rap? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to talk jive talk? Seriously. <laughs> I understood what everybody was. You say so you are fluent in Ebonics. I'm, I'm, I'm very fluent. Is really? that right? I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know you spoke he Ebonics. Spoke, he speaks two languages. <laughs> That's pretty good. Multilingual. And did Don King pick your pocket, or he was a gentleman that night? Don King <laughs> is a player, man. He sure is. <laughs> Don King comes. He, first of all, he comes into the building, and he's got this guy yelling the same stuff that uh, that guy yells that brings Mike Tyson in the ring, like Allah Akbar, Allah whatever. Oh, right, 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 right. Not right. to disrespect anybody's religion, but I guess he's he's screaming. <laughs> something like this and he's going uh, Don King in the new millennium Don King in 2000 everybody's turning around like yeah. Don King in the new millennium Don King yeah. in 2000 what is, it? What is he boxing is, is. And is it a boxing and match he, and he came down with the funny part about it though this he was just fronting he was, and that, that's Ebonic for just pretending this yes. is the funniest thing because <laughs> he's coming down the aisle and he's got like probably about 12 people with him right and so they just sit down right behind me six and six seats each row and then all of a sudden the real people who have those tickets <gasps> show up up. And oh like eight no! Of those people <laughs> he t- leave. He only had four seats. <laughs> <laughs> That's I was funny. I was in hysterics. So when he walks in the room, he has a guy yelling and stuff. And, uh, and, and, yeah, yeah. yelling and everything. It was so fun. I mean, it was hilarious. He was the biggest star in the room doing this. <laughs> right, right. You know, and he's got like I say, he has twelve people though. But unbeknownst to us, he's only got four seats. He's like he's like Julius Caesar yeah, walking into the room. Something. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. So so as a matter of fact, he came in with one of the owners of Caesar's Palace. <laughs> so t- hey, hey, so t- t- do me a favor. So tell me. Uh, when, so when you were a kid growing up, yeah, right. I, I mean, you were famous for a long time, even before your TV show, like because you did a lot of TV work and stuff. Yeah, he did a lot of TV work mm-hmm. and stuff. All right. So, so um, there's a couple of stories. One of the stories I read about you was about Della Reese, which oh, I thought was really good. What's that? Right, you know, who Della Reese is. Of course, she she's no on angel. that touched by an angel. <laughs> yeah, she got that big gray piece of hair. Yeah, the skunk hair. The skunk hair, dude. Right. So <laughs> anyway. So you got to know Della Reese as a kid, right? Yeah, I did a show with her with Flip Wilson. May he rest in peace. And, yeah, Flip's um, a great guy. Yeah. Um, and Flip uh, let us touch his um, fake yeah, penis. Yeah, I saw what you did to oh. poor Flip. What no, do you mean I did? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't do it. I'm offered. No. <laughs> just, be, just because an elderly man offers to whip it out, you elderly. don't necessarily let him do that. Oh, please. <laughs> well, all right. Anyway, so, oh, go, so that's not the point of the story. So but I did a show with her called Charlie and Company with Flip Wilson. And, uh, I re- you know, she she played my grandmother. Right. And? Um, 
And you, you got friendly with her. Yeah, I got real friendly with her. As a matter of fact, she used to hold these church services at her home. Right. And my mother would take me, and I would like you know wait in the bedroom while the ladies were worshiping and whatnot. Well, she's like Your a preacher. Your mother would go to yeah. the services. Yeah, I mean, you hey, know, hey, it's Della Reese. You figure why not? Yeah, you know? she actually performed somebody's but wedding. But then after a while, I guess Della started asking for money. Right. And it was like my mom kind of got hip to the game. It was like, oh, I see what this it's is. It's not about. just a this, prayer meeting. Exactly. This is not a prayer meeting. So you get like four weeks of cool prayer meeting, <laughs> and then you get the fifth week of membership dues. Right. And so, it's a hefty number, I bet. Know, of course, it was probably a stupid number at the time. I didn't right. Know, right. I was nine years old. But anyway, I saw her at a play probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe a year later. Show's been canceled. We're off the air. We don't, you know, right. not visiting her anymore. And I was so excited. I dashed all the way across. Because you're a kid. And I you... was. I yeah, was literally excited. about ten years old. I dashed all the way across the entire um, the entire uh, auditorium, and I'm like, "Della, Della, do you remember me? Do you remember me?" And she just looks at me, just as stone faced as ever, and says, "Yes, I remember you," and just goes right back to wow. me. Wow. And, and what made it worse was my arms were like outstretched. Wow. You know, you, you, you know, when you like you're a when little you give kid. somebody a hug, and you're a little kid. So she like, dissed you. Oh yeah. Oh, and this is the, the because you didn't give money to the church. This is the. <laughs> That's what it's about. And he's well, nine years old. you don't know. Right. So this maybe Della could be mad at you. Maybe dizzies. Della could be mad at your mom for some reason, but not you. You're a kid. Whatever, man. Rejected by an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I forget yeah, her. Do an episode like that. Yeah. And what happened when you were at UCLA Film School? Everyone told me to ask about that. What happened? Oh, no. I just, you know, it's funny. I, I, I go to school and right. you try to sit in and blend in with a class of like 200, 300 people. And every blue moon, you know, when you're in these critical studies classes about television and whatnot. Right, right. Uh-oh. They start doing a little commentary about you. And everybody in the class, in this one particular case, knew that I was in the class. Right. This, ba- this lady basically started working away from Emmanuel Lewis, Gary Coleman, to bingo, <laughs> me. Right. And so I'm like slumping down in my chair and whatnot. And she calls me like in the middle of this class. She says, well, you know, well, I think his character was a, you know, a, a Sambo. And, you know, it was, it, right. she, just, it, it, she just berated my character just as, <laughs> as badly. And she didn't she know you were sitting there. And she had no idea I was sitting there. Really? Oh, and then expects to come up to me after the class, after somebody finally tells her you've made a complete ass of yourself. Right. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. And whatever, whatever. And she was a handicapped girl. I don't pick on the afflicted. So I was like, well, you know, you're a nice guy. I was like, he thanked her too. <laughs> Yeah. No, I didn't thank her. Though. I, I gave her that you know what you did look and just went on about my. It was business. hard for you to get laid. Though. I, I figured you were getting laid around twelve years old and oh, stuff. But you didn't. Here you go in my bedroom. Business. Seventeen. Oh. Seventeen. You uh, still had not gotten laid. You were a virgin, right? I was a virgin. Yeah. You were. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I can't figure that yeah, out. You, you, know, you, you gotta understand. You gotta understand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it was fig- not that I could not get laid. You just right. have to understand. I'm a late bloomer, and I absolutely loved sports. That's all. Oh, I so cared you weren't about. even in right. girls. I was. I was taking my basketball to school when I was in the 11th grade, and I couldn't right. understand why the guys didn't want to play at lunchtime anymore. They didn't want to get stinky for the girls. Right, right. You didn't care. I didn't care. You I were a late bloomer. I, I wanted to hoop. Wow. I wanted to hoop. Just think, you could have been feeling up Della Reese when you were nine years old. <laughs> you could have had her, maybe. You had a shot. So, 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 when you were seventeen, was when you first started asking out girls. I'd say when I was, yeah, I, I didn't realize until about two months before graduation. I was like, wow, we got some really cute girls in our school. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you woke up, and, and, and you realized that it was you, too late. A guy in your Everybody position, already been knocked off. Everybody. But a guy in your position could have gotten any girl. I don't know about that. But Pretty much, I, I could have gotten a couple extra yeses, maybe. And th- and then did you make up for uh, lost time? Did you uh, did you take advantage of the situation? I don't know if I made up for lost time. I just you know grew mm. into my own. So what at what age were you when your fingers hit paradise? Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh-oh. He knows what it means. <laughs> well, my That's ebonics. <laughs> no, you know when you when you you started oh, to get nasty. Who got the sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> not me. Not me. That isn't me. <laughs> right, but you currently have a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh-oh. That's a, a lucky lady. Who told you that? No, I, I got it in my we notes. We have oh, That's man. right. Researchers. And you, you met her at Martha's Vineyard, it says. Yeah. She, That's where you vacation. Yeah. No kidding. She, she's, she's, she's a hot broad model? She's great. No. I don't. I told you, man. I don't mess with people in this business. You don't? I just, Why? Nah, I don't, I don't. You know, I don't know if it can I... Well, I don't, I don't know if I should say this, but you just don't shit where you eat. No, you can't say that. <laughs> no, can't <laughs> That's say funny, that. but you can't say it. <laughs> Is she a Kennedy? She's Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, nah, she's... Um, no, not at all. She's, <laughs> she's not a Kennedy. She's a very bright lady, just moving really? up the corporate ladder. And uh, really, young girl. Yeah. How so old? is this yeah, a recent new? Twenty-two. Yeah, it's kind of new. New mm. relationship. Like, like three months. Twenty-two. Yeah. Mm. 
I remember 22. Is this the first serious <laughs> relationship? <laughs> yeah, this is the first relationship where I really feel like I, I really admire the person for who they are. Don't be stupid and get married. That's cool. Hey, I'm, now I'm fighting it. I'm fighting <laughs> it. Wow. I'm really? I'm fighting it. Whoa. But at the same time, though, you got to acknowledge when somebody special comes into your life. Yeah. Yeah. Date them a lot. <laughs> Date them forever. <laughs> yeah. I'll have a talk with you later. I mean, for God's take sake. Take him under your wing. They'll take you under your wing. You know all the things you find cute about her right now? Yeah. About 10 years, it's going to be real annoying. Oh, come on. <laughs> Every last one of them? Not, none of them? No, I'm sure, I'm sure. But I don't know why, though. That from what I noticed, though, guys that are married are more successful in the long run. That is yeah, true. Yeah, because they don't want to go home. That's it. <laughs> they want to keep working. <laughs> you, may, you, got, you got buff lesbians flowing through here, but you got a wife at home that That's really right. loves you. Yes, she does. Uh, <laughs> I guess. You know, I was going to say to you, though, if you killed your girlfriend tomorrow, You'd be free in 10 years. <laughs> Just think that through. Is that right, Robin? I don't know if you get Did we once figure that out? You get more time for a girlfriend than I don't than know, but do I'd finally wife. make the cover of People magazine. Yes, you certainly <laughs> would. <laughs> uh, and they'd probably darken your picture, too. Here, you'd go do the OJ treatment. That's right, the OJ treatment. <laughs> you'd have little pictures of all other past fallen child stars. Oh, yeah, yeah it would be a real mess. Decorating the, the outside of my head. Yeah. yeah. So, so you got this new TV show. Yeah. You're on uh, UPN. It's called Grown Ups. Yeah. Now, what's this I hear about? you're supposed to be my partner soon. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, we'll okay. see about that. I'm not going to make any any statements. Uh, that, that's on the QT. Yeah, that's what is that? Court of law. What about court of law? DL. All right. So talk about your show, Grown Ups. <laughs> yeah. Now, this I assume you are grown up on this show. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. It's just about I don't know. It's about being a uh, being a grown up, but not really feeling like one. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely at that age right now. And so are my friends. So. I'm at the same age. <laughs> I know. We're still. There. Yeah, I don't feel grown up. So you know, it's 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 really I really like the point of view of the piece. And I was reading a review of the show that said that in many instances, you will take off your shirt to show your very muscular Are you body. Are like becoming? Uh, <laughs> Are you a sex uh, symbol uh, now? Sex or what? You know what? You know, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Some insecure fat bastard said that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he just knows he should have been in the gym, and then he just right. you know taking right. a knock on me. No, not that's not a knock. You got a good physique. Yeah. You like no, showing I it. I don't know. We about were that. discussing this earlier. <laughs> it's always congruous to the story. Believe me. Whenever <laughs> I have to take off, you don't do shirt. frivolous <laughs> nudity. Is what you say. I'm just walking around, just showing flesh. Why did you take your show? Why? Why do you take your Reaction to you know your previous character yes. who was you know supposed to be emaciated. Yes. this is a way to say to the ladies that you are now a yeah. man. Yeah, that you have a man's body. Okay, if you want to write a critical studies paper about <laughs> it, maybe there is some validity there though. Right. But you know, it's, why it's, why it in the show though do you take your shirt off? Why is it? How is it? Well, how uh, does okay, it if you're in bed story? and you have with a young lady, chances are you're not going to have a shirt on in that that situation. Well, I do, and I'm in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I always make sure I have a well, shirt on. Howard, let me let you. In a little tidbit, I remove mine. Really? <laughs> Show it off. Works better that way. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so you're getting laid on a regular basis, huh? That's nice. Uh. Man, good for you. You got to be careful. Don't knock her up. Uh. I hope you're wearing a rubber. Uh, I mean, you'll be strapped. I'll tell you for cash. There I you am. go. That's it. I am the poster boy for condom use. You are. Poster boy. Really? Even when you get oral sex? Oh. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> man, they come like bullets from you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but hey, at least I'm sincere, not like Kathy Lee. I want to know. <laughs> they, they, I respect that, but right. man, they come like bullets from you. No, during oral sex, you don't uh, <laughs> wear rubber, do you? Who's with the button again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Man, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, that's safe. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Not that safe. <laughs> safe. You don't need you don't need a combination and a padlock. You need a combination. <laughs> hey, it's overkill. <laughs> All right, well that's uh, interesting. <laughs> Wanna take a few phone calls or not? Yeah, we take some phone All right, a couple of phone calls. The show is called Grown Ups. It can be seen Monday nights on UPN. UPN, the great network that also carries Star Trek. That's right. Wait, Voyager. Wait, uh, WWF. And oh, WWF. That's right. I'm wrestling, a Star Trek man. I mean, wrestling is a force UPN. to be reckoned with. I was watching UPN last night for Star Trek. Yeah. Voyager was a repeat, but I didn't care. I'll Great watch show. any of them. Great show. It was a good one where uh, they go back in time and their time's all over the place and that Chinese guy gets old. Yeah, right. I saw the gray streaks in his hair as I was yeah. flipping through. Yeah, he gets old. Hmm. He looked like Della Reese, actually. <laughs> oh, Brian, you're on the air. Uh, Howard. Yeah. Hey, how are you, buddy? It's Brian. Big fan. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh... <laughs> Question for Urkel. Uh, oh, I'm not Jaleel. Uh, Jaleel. Jaleel. Right with, uh, Jaleel. 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 Sorry. I love the show, by the way. Uh, thank I you. I still man. watch it. Uh, 
You ever hook up with Laura Winslow? I always thought she was uh, really hot. The girl that played Laura. Ah, you little troublemaker. Nah. Did you ever uh, bang any of the chicks from the uh, show? Nah. You know, we... Your one that was your girlfriend. That sounds like a yes. Oh, yo, yo. Be ca- I'm, I'm going to tell you yeah. right now, man. Be careful what you say because she passed away, right. man. Did she? I'm so sorry. She was, was a really kid. beautiful girl. Yeah, she was a very beautiful young lady. So she was never your... Uh, what did she pass away from? No, she passed away from cancer. Just Really? Yeah. Young girl? How Wait, old? Wait, remember I she told you that story. She had like stomach cancer or something. Yeah. Right? I remember that now. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Were you close with her? Yeah, very close. Very close. Were you really cl- are you still close with all the people from the show? Um, a few cast members. But just her. People have gone on. Uh, but you know. never were lovers or anything? But no, 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 no. You were never lovers with any of the people on the show? No, nah, no. Nah, that's... How'd that happen? I just told you my motto, man. Don't, uh... Yeah, where don't, you eat. Don't, <laughs> don't go to the bathroom <laughs> where you eat. Don't mess where you eat. <laughs> don't mess where you eat. <laughs> you can eat where you eat, though. <laughs> you damn right. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh... Let's uh, see who else is on here. Okay, Sean, go ahead. You're on with Jaleel. What's up, what's up? How Alex, you doing, John? Robin. Yeah. DJ. Yo, brother, you came a long way. Thank you, man. Yeah, I remember I'd, I'd be growing up with you back, oh, back in the day. Oh, God. This is a white guy. You. Get out of here. <laughs> You're a white guy. <laughs> I'd be growing up with you. Who's this, Marion Barry? <laughs> yeah. Now, my name is Sean. I'm from Roosevelt. Sure you are. <laughs> ah. I appreciate the depth, man. This is Sean McMurphy. Right. <laughs> Your bro, bro Jaleel, man. Was loser. What? He began no ass back in the uh, day. <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I think this is a white guy trying Ebonics. And yeah, I believe so. A very good job of it. Uh, uh, it if it's, you call, you should have something like decent to say, or at least don't let everybody know. You have said that some of the you schmuck. You you said that some of the cast members on your on your uh, TV show were very mean to you. Is that were true? They? they were jealous of your success, weren't they? Well, that's gonna happen. Some right. people feel threatened by youth. I can tell who was threatened. Reginald Veljo. Yeah. I'm not calling. The names. guy who played the father. I'm not calling him names. You know You're a very is? intuitive man. It that show was developed for him. To be his show. That's right. And you yeah. came in and stole it, didn't you? In fact, Urkel oh. was originally just, just a one-shot deal, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Oh. And then he had to do all these scenes with you. Yeah, yeah I like that. We actually had great chemistry together, though. Yeah. On on camera, but off camera was a different story, wasn't it? Perhaps at times. He didn't realize how good that was at for him, times, did yeah. he? You know, I put it this way. I'm not going to bash anybody's character, but I just, I feel like, to me as an actor, you should strive to want to be on stage with peers, with mm-hmm. people that can you can learn from as well. As, Why not? If the show's you know, a success. And, and exactly. And just give and take. It's like, mm-hmm. my goal really as an actor is to be on stage with the Hackmans and the Denzel Washingtons and the Pacinos. And the best you can be. I really don't give a darn who gets top billing. I just want to get out there and learn. It and was so, awfully petty so. of this guy to treat you that way, especially you being a, a child. Kid, yeah. yeah. You put up with a lot of crap, haven't you? I mean, uh, being are you sorry your parents pushed you into being a child actor? Nah, they didn't push me into being a child actor. No. No. It's, it's, it's something that I just did naturally. and I. I well, wait a minute. Doing. You can't drive yourself anywhere. No, no, <laughs> not at all. But it was like, it was something that my mother, she, I guess she realized that I was I was pretty good at. I mean, I started booking jobs right away. Do you feel your childhood was robbed from you? Absolutely not. Really, it I feel like, like I feel like at some school point and did all that. Yeah, stuff I did. Anyway. I did all that stuff. I, I did all that stuff. And I, another thing, I just make it. I make it a point really to hang out with normal people. That, that Where do you find them? Yeah, how do you find normal people? <laughs> you go to school, man. You go to school. You, people. you go to school. Yeah, but how do you know they want to be with you? There are ways to find out. Yeah. There are ways to find out. Hmm. Believe me, it's just like your intuition jumps several notches when, you, when you're working in this business as a child. Really? Well, I should have been in it as a child. Maybe yeah, I we have somebody. no intuition. Everybody <laughs> seems to want to hang out with me because I'm famous. <laughs> Dwayne, you're on the air. Yeah, I want to know, do you date any hot actresses? <laughs> nah, I haven't, I haven't had the good fortune of dating any hot actresses, but... Uh, oh, for Howard. Yeah. Oh, for me? <laughs> no, I don't oh, date any either. You haven't dated any <laughs> Howard. <laughs> yeah. Howard. Yeah. I want to know, could I meet Tamara Maui? It's my dream to meet her, please. Who? Who? Tamara Maui. Well, what do you want to do with Tamara? Because Tamara's a staunch Christian, so if you got any bad ideas, man... No, I just want to meet her. Uh, oh, okay. Like, be her friend or something. You want to get oh, down man. with her? Yeah, I want to be her friend. Because she's like, tell her, Janelle, if you see her... Oh, I've seen it. Oh, get out of here. This guy's a loser. (laughs) He ain't going nowhere. Howard, just pull out the hot You ever make out with uh, Whitney Houston? (laughs) Oh, please. No, you never got her? (laughs) She came to our stage once, though. She did? Beautiful woman. She's a very beautiful woman. I would have sex with her. Bobby Brown. Big entourage. And what's your deal? You only date black chicks, or would you date a white chick? I'd date anybody. You would? I would date anybody. That's cool. What about this girl you're seeing now? She's black, though. She is black? Yeah. She must be hot. She's hot in the head. Hmm. Mentally, she's, she's great. Really? Yeah. Could you get it up for Whoopi? Uh, I'm just trying to get it to says your taste. Is, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. What does that mean? <laughs> I want to know his taste. Get it up for Whoopi. <laughs> Can you? Absolutely <laughs> not. Whoopi would be just oh, like, be my mother. Let me tell you who Thank I like. You. Left Eye from TLC. That's well, my girl. She's hot. I would go out with her. Ooh. 
Ooh, I'd like to see that interview having been left out. I'd let her burn down my house. Uh, but yeah, but don't close your eyes. <laughs> I don't even care. Don't close your eyes. Honey, burn down my house. Just sleep with me. <laughs> yes, Jose. Yeah, hello? Yeah, hi. Yeah, what's yeah, up? What's up, everybody? Hey. Um, I heard that uh, the guy who played the father, he was gay in uh, Family Matters. Is that true? Um, I read that in the Inquirer, didn't I? That's, that I was. Know. I didn't read that. That's an ugly rumor. Did he try that to was an ugly rumor? rumor? I think, I have no, oh, no, 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 no. Pull no, on no. your suspenders? Oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> was there any truth to this? or you nah, didn't, No, it was not. not He's not gay. I mean, I've, I've even been called gay by radio stations and whatnot. I mean, I think once you make it, you get called gay. So. Dude, there was rumors that you were gay for yeah, a while, right? I, that's actually something I laugh at. If you get, right. if you get called gay, it's like, hey, I think I'm doing well in my career right That's now. Hey, when you right. do scenes with that guy, I mean, you know. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, I think Fred was calling you guys. <laughs> <over there. laughs> Is it true? <laughs> All right, Rosa, you're on the air. Hi, Howard. Yes. I hope you don't feel bad about people calling you Urkel because Urkel's going to live down through it. History. Well, I think the character will live in history, though, but it's kind of funny. It's like, you know, when a kid comes up to me and says it or whatnot, I don't mind. But when an adult comes up to me and says it at this point, especially, it's just like... It's, it's a little either, annoying. It's either uh, somebody going out of their way to be a jerk or just somebody who has no class. And so I don't you really, understand I don't, I don't how uh, Gary Coleman wound up clocking that one. Oh, you know what? On the, on, on the real, that I was so pissed about that verdict. I know what that woman did to provoke yeah. Gary. I, already, yeah. I don't have to be there to even know what that woman did to provoke Gary. Right. It just sucks that we live in a country where we have laws that we don't really completely understand you know, thoroughly ourselves, even as a citizens. But That's I know true. what that woman did. I, I, boy, I'd have been there to help him. Right. <laughs> I'd have clocked her, too. I'd have clocked a <laughs> big fat tail, too. <laughs> Rosa, anything else you want to say to Jaleel? He shouldn't have been so funny in the show. <laughs> he shouldn't have been so funny in yeah, the show. Yeah, less success and he wouldn't have had this problem. That's know, right. right. That's Which right. Funny. All right, thank you. Tony, go ahead. Two more, we only got time for two more questions. It's Jaleel White. Yeah, how you doing? Yes. Yes, Howard. Yes. Listen, I want to ask Jaleel, do you, do you plan to attend the Million Youth March? <laughs> the Million Youth March, will the you be? The Million Youth March? Well, I'm an adult now, so whenever right. uh, they have the Million Adult March, I'll That's right, that's that. when you're going to you'll, show you'll up to that. that. I'll show up to that one. Okay. Yeah, you've got to be careful at the Million Youth March. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know what's going on with that one. Um, uh, Bob, go ahead. How you doing, Howard? How's everybody? <laughs> All right, man. Listen, listen to you guys since 86. You guys got me through law school. Good. Got a question for your guest. Yeah. I always see him. I always see you courtside at Nick Games, first row. Yeah. And I always wanted to know how do these celebrities get these tickets that everyone is dying for? How does that the happen? The Knicks, the Knicks set you up with that, don't they? Nah, not the Knicks necessarily. The Knicks do sometimes. I think they take care of Puff right now. Right. Puff but Daddy is the man, yeah. Puff Daddy's the man. You're not going to knock Puff for his seats. Uh, <laughs> how do you get those front row seats? No, you, you end up just, you know, I guess as you move up the, the ladder of success or whatnot, you end up just making associations with people. Uh, in the business that who do have you know? seats. Come on, right, who do you know? Us. Give us the name of the person you know that gets well, you those I, I seats. I can tell you this. Spike Lee's not giving them to me, that's for sure. <laughs> right. Spike's not selling his seat for anybody. Well, Spike Lee's been there for a long time. so right. he, he actually moved down. I saw him. He, he was up yeah. here and he came He down. actually owns those seats. Yeah. 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 But so you have to, seat. you kind of like work your... You just, you just, you know some people. You know, you right. end up, you may end up having a genuine friendship with two guys that I own think. seats, you know, over there and over right. here. Okay, I get you. So that's how you do it. You got to know people. Yeah, you got to know people, man. All right. Those aren't being bought. All right, one last question. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, Howard, I just wanted to say it was the mother on the show who was jealous. You that think? show was made for her. It was a spinoff from Perfect Strangers, and she <laughs> even left the show because of, uh, he was getting so much fame. Wow. So it wasn't the dad who was upset. Uh, you guys wanted to bash Reggie, though. But <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't Reggie. No, nah, not really. Reggie was oh, not jealous. It wasn't Reggie, huh? He was nice to you. I think Reggie, Reggie definitely grew into it, and after a while, he really became a really endearing person. Right, but the so mom. So the mom was the one. Would she yell at you who and stuff? Who even noticed her? Hey, man, I got no words for that chick. Oh. <laughs> really? Who even was that bad? We don't even know her name. I got no words for that chick. I really? Feel, I feel like by mentioning her name, I might be helping her career at this wow. point. Wow. Really? So. Really? <laughs> Has she tried to get in touch with you now that you have the new show on uh, nah, UPN? Not at all. Not, not at all. She knows better. She knows better. <laughs> she knows better. Well, how can you be mean to a little kid, though? She I mean, knows better. Was she mean to you? I mean, what do you want? A big fat yes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want a big fat yes. <laughs> yes, I do. The truth. I want to drag it out of you. There's a book in you, my friend. <laughs> there is one. There is one. All right, Jaleel White, his uh, new show is called Grown Ups. He's doing the promotional tour. All right. And uh, leaving here to go to The View. I want to know your honest opinion. So, seriously, tomorrow you just, just lay it on me. You watch the show. and I'm I will ready. watch the show. You, you're happy with the show and you're ready to be reviewed by me. I'm ready to be reviewed by you. And so you're in bed with chicks on this show. I'm in bed oh. with chicks. Are they hot? Hot, 
fine women. And what are they wearing when you're in bed? And they're wearing bodysuits. Nice. <laughs> do you get aroused when you're in the bed with these girls? You know what's so funny? I was so worried about that. Of I course was you so do. Worried about you're that. a man. But you know, you got some, the sound effects, boy. <laughs> but you know, you you you've got so many people working around you. And you're, so, oh. you're concentrating on what you're doing. I'm serious. That's what happened. You just didn't. It didn't. It he didn't obviously like can that. focus. Howard. I bet yeah. you have a big one. Whoa. I bet you do. I bet you do. I see the way you matured. Sure. Are you well hung? Is there a rattlesnake in your pants? Is there a rattlesnake in my pants? I'm very small, I'll admit it. Woo. When I was on the set of Private Parts, on, in, in the bathtub scene, and I also was in bed with Mary McCormick, I was aroused the whole time. I didn't care who was around. But nobody knew. No, no. It was uh, almost undetectable. But I'm telling you, I, gotta, I swear to you this is the truth. I'm not saying it for radio. I was aroused in these scenes. I mean, it was fabulous. I can imagine if you really start going at it. Yes, though. you don't make out and stuff with them in this. Well, scene. You well I really do, but yeah, it, it really it. it didn't really get horizontal. You know, it, you didn't. it's still television, so it's not ever going to get real I horizontal. See. Not, I'm not going to be Wesley Snipes in Mo Better Blues. You know, right, what I'm right, just right, putting right. it down for mm. his cause. <laughs> <laughs> Are you aroused right now? I just want to know. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely this, this not. This interview I am, did not arrive. You know, you're a real so, professional. I am so flaccid right now. <laughs> really good. All right, that's all I want to know. You think you'll get aroused when you talk to Star Jones later today? I doubt it. I'll keep it professional. Right, keep it professional. I'll keep it professional. So thanks, Jaleel, for stopping by. It's always good to have you here. Always good talking to you. And uh, we will uh, we will be uh, back. After these messages. Is it true you have an honorary uh, black belt in Taekwondo? Honorary? What yeah. What is that? Man, you know all my business. What is it? What What's is the a, secret? That's what I want to know. What, what, what do you mean by honorary? Honorary. It's kind of like when people go to colleges, they get degrees, and you know they're just handed them. You so know? you don't know So you don't karate. know karate. No, I don't know. I know crazy. I don't know crazy. <laughs> no. You been in any fights? Yeah, when I was a kid. Really? When I was a kid. But now, shoot, the only thing that's going to take me is, that, that's only going to take me to a court. Right. Can you kick some ass, though? Put it this way. You never know what a man will do when he's pushed against the wall. I know. I fought Fred once. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to use karate on that broad from the, the old show? The mom? <laughs> uh, Howard, you know yeah. exactly what buttons to push. What? He's actually got a pretty interesting story of what happened when he got picked on in school. What about his dad had to come down to school and kick the crap out of the kid. Uh, your dad had to kick some ass for you? No, my daddy. Man, Gear, I was almost out of here. <laughs> you were almost done. I was done. almost out of here. You had your father come to school and take no, care was, of it? No, I was. I was. I was a. I was a young kid, probably about seventh, eighth grade. Right. Just you know. Hey, his father didn't want to kill his investment. Just two, <laughs> you can't uh, kid who made your money or trouble. <laughs> yeah. Two hundred pound kid just used to flick pencils in the back of my head in class. <laughs> so you know, we've I, all been there. I, I guess I took the, uh, the the passive aggressive approach, and I just used to. I picked up the pencils and stuck them in my backpack and say, "Hey, man." If you want to keep flicking pencils at me, you're going to buy a whole lot of pencils. Right. So he comes up to me and he says, I want my pencils back. And next thing I know, I'm getting launched across the back of the classroom. <laughs> wow. So I broke out. I didn't even think about fighting. I mean, this guy's just huge. Right. There was no way you were winning. My dad came back to school with me and uh, helped you out. Yeah. No, he just came back to school with me. He was like, I just want to see the kid. You know, right. I want to see the kid. You know, my dad was small when he was young. And, right. Um, I guess he went in the classroom and uh, he said something to the kid next thing I know the kid ran into the next classroom and he's talking about getting his homies oh man <laughs> right, that's a, I'm gonna go get my homies <laughs> <laughs> and I mean the funniest part about this, this is the funniest but, part but about didn't you grow up in some rich neighborhood no I did not I'm telling you Once I grew you... up in a very nice neighborhood right but uh, you know when you there's, Pasadena's kind of funny you gotta go to school on the bad side of Pasadena even if you wow. live on the good side of Pasadena really where yeah. are these teachers I mean were there teachers while you're being lost oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely I mean look you got to pick these public schools carefully, man. These <laughs> teachers don't give a darn. No. I mean, I took Spanish at this school, man, and, and all I learned was how to play poker. Where are you living now? Like in Beverly Hills <laughs> oh, or something? No, I live near school. I live near UCLA. You do? Yeah. You drive a fancy car? I drive a, a what truck. What do you got? You got a truck? Yeah. Cops pull you over all the time? Cops pull you over. They do? The cops do pull you over. And then what do you do? Like, hey, listen, man, I was Urkel on TV. <laughs> My address is... Not even. You, know, it's, yeah. it's, you got your jerk redneck cops out there, and then you got your nice cops out there. So right. I just I deal with people based on what they're giving me. All right. All right. There you go. It's a whole situation out there. It's tough. It mm -hmm. seems like it's tough. You know what you need? An Urkel license plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's exactly what I need. <laughs> Cops will leave you alone. That's exactly what I need. All right. Need. The new sitcom, <laughs> Grown Ups. Well, I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to look to see you with your shirt off and see these girls in bed with you. I think you'll like this one. I bet you I will. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after these words.